Let's look at the crystal structures that we'll be covering in this class. And let's uh, start on this one layer of atoms um, level and build up from there. Um, so let's just imagine spheres like bouncy balls in a box when we're thinking about this. And think about how you can arrange those balls at the bottom of a box to fit as many as you can in. Uh, so you're just doing one layer, you have really two options with spheres. Um, you can line them up uh, where each ball is touching four other ones. And that'll be our one here on the left. Um, and so any one of these atoms or balls right here will be in contact with four others. Oh, sorry, extra star there. Um, and then we can also imagine then offsetting our rows so they aren't spaced exactly evenly. Um, and to fit more of these spheres into the same space. And so over here on the right, we have a closer packed arrangement. Or if we look at any one of these atoms, we can see that around it, it's touching six instead of four other balls or spheres or atoms. Um, so this one's touching six. And so this one is going to have a greater packing efficiency compared to our first. So now our next task is to add another layer of balls on top of this and to see what happens. So taking this and adding another layer of atoms, we have a few choices. Um, we can either add them directly on top, which we'll call this an AA pattern, where the two layers have the exact same arrangement and are directly on top of each other. Or we can do an AB pattern, where between our two layers, we add that second layer, we offset it. Um, so that way we can fit a bit more. So just like in our first layer, we could increase our packing efficiency by offsetting the layers or the rows. Here, we're going to offset the layers to increase our packing efficiency. And so as we do this, we're going to start developing these crystal structures. If we have, uh, that we'll be looking at, if we have uh, the kind of most simple version where we just have the balls stacked directly on top of each other in this AA pattern, this will actually give us what we call a simple cubic arrangement or crystal lattice. This will be one of the ones we're responsible for knowing this quarter. Now, if we take that same arrangement and we alternate our stacking, we would have this one right here. And we'll call this one a body-centered cubic. Back, cupic, cubic. And in this one, they, they pack so tightly, each of these atoms, um, in the center, so that, so let's take one of these blue ones right here. I'll make it green. So originally it looked like it was touching four other atoms in its same row. Well, as the second layer offsets and sets down, it's going to be in contact with these four pink atoms right here. And it's gonna be in such close contact that it's actually only gonna be touching those four and it'll create space in between the other blue atoms it was previously touching before we added this other layer. And so um, it'll actually not be touching the same atoms in its layer, but rather atoms above it and below it. All right, so the other option is we take that, that arrangement where we had offset in the rows and now we can offset in the layers right here. So this is gonna become two other types of arrangements. It's gonna become, um, hexagonal close pack or cubic pack or a face centered cubic pack or cubic close pack, which I'll, I'm going to show in the next slide. And so this arrangement is going to split into two other possible ones. And we'll have four that we cover in this class. So now we add a third layer. Here's our body centered cubic where we had offset once in between layers. And then we'll go back and add the third layer where the first layer was. Um, and that's giving us what we call an ABA pattern, right? The location of those layers is shifting just one and then going back and then shifting and then back. So we can do that same kind of pattern, that ABA pattern, where we just have two layers that are offset and then they come back to the same. And we have two options of where the layers are. 
And uh, if we do that with our closer packed atoms that have the different rows offset as well, we're going to get a hexagonal close packed arrangement, um, which we abbreviate HCP. But I have another option with this close packed uh, version. I actually, instead of um, going back to that first layer, I can create a third layer that's different. This is an ABC style pattern of layering. Um, and that's going to give us a cubic close packed or face centered cubic arrangement. And these um, are two different names that'll be the same arrangement. So you might see CCP, which is cubic close packed, or FCC, which is face centered cubic. Um, I think I personally prefer face centered cubic and use it more. Um, and, and I don't really know why, something about the way I learned it. So these are going to be our structures that we are going to work with this quarter. We're going to have HCP and then FCC, and then also our body-centered cubic and our simple cubic as well. Let's take a, a little bit of a closer look at these closest pack structures um, to kind of help um, visualize them. And whenever we work in these 3D structures, it can, uh, for some of us, be really difficult to visualize this. And for others, this comes very naturally. Um, so if it doesn't come naturally, don't be frustrated. It's, it's hard. Um, so this is a comparison of our hexagonal close packed and our cubic close packed. So this was the A, B, A arrangement for hexagonal closest packed. And our cubic closest packed, or face centered cubic as well, is that A, B, C pattern. And we've colored them differently here and have shown it from a different angle. Um, and so in that hexagonal close pack, we've got um, one set of layers offset from the other set of layers and these hexagons. And in our cubic close pack, we have three different layers that then repeat. And I can look at this a little bit differently and see that it's like one ball here with on a top of a triangle, like increasing size triangles essentially within a, a cube. And so this is just trying to rotate your view on this for our layers that go um, A, B, C, A, B, C. Um, one way that I think about this too, that I, this is the one I personally prefer a bit more for comparing hexagonal close packed and cubic close packed is um, thinking about one atom and what it is experiencing. And so this is kind of focusing on this atom here in the B layer. And in that B layer, it's surrounded by six other atoms. So any one atom is surrounded by six in its own layer. And then for our hexagonal close back pack, which is that A, B, A format, it's going to be touching three atoms from a hexagon of atoms in the row above and below it in the same arrangement. And so it'll be touching a three here and a three here. This is going to have a coordination number of 12. And we'll do some more work on coordination numbers altogether too. Um, and then in that cubic close packed, the, the first layer here, it's, it's again, that atom is going to touch three above and three below but it's like they're reversed from one another. Um, and so it's going in a different direction, but it's still touching three above and three below and six in its same plane for the same coordination number. It's just a slightly different arrangement of one of those layers. Um, and so here is an example right here of zinc sulfide. And so here we're going to have a mixture of different atoms. And so one of the questions is what, that you can look at this and say, what is the coordination number? And it's hard when you're looking at this in two dimensions. Um, it's nice to be able to rotate it around. And so I tend to enjoy picking up just one of these atoms for this. And, So if we look at the zinc sulfide, we can pick out the coordination number for each of these different ions. Um, so I'm going to grab, uh, let's highlight a zinc right here, and it, its structure is helping us. That zinc ion is surrounded by four different uh, sulfide ions. Let me get a different color. There we go. Um, so it's essentially touching these ones that it's showing up onto right here. And so it would have a coordination number of four around each zinc. And then if we want to take a look at um, a sulfur atom, 
it's not a great one in the middle. Um, yeah, hey, let's take this one right here. Ooh, that's a lot of layers of stuff. Here we go. And then if we take a look at what's surrounding that one, um, we can see that this one right here is coming in the center of this plane. So in the plane, it's right here in the center. Um, and so it's going to actually have uh, zinc touching it here and here. And then there's going to be one above it and, and a second above it as well. So it'll also have a coordination number uh, four. And these can be kind of tricky to look at without holding them in your hands or rotating them, which we can't really do. Um, so it takes a little bit of practice getting used to viewing these different planes. All right, here's looking at the unit cells of, in, in kind of a, as a cubic um, on top of what we've looked at. And we're looking at the simple cubic, the body centered cubic, and the face centered cubic unit cells. Um, and so when we're looking at these, we can see the lattice points are going to coordinate to these atoms that are then in gray below. And our simple cubic is going to have four lattice points on each corner, on each layer or each lattice plane. And then the difference between that and our body centered cubic where our layers offset is that there'll be one that's in the center of the unit cell. And so that's going to increase the number of atoms that we have in the unit cell by one. And then in our face centered cubic, um, and this is one of our closest packed arrangements, looking at one of its unit cells, we'll see that we'll have part of an atom on each face of the cube. And so there's six half atoms, and then we'll have atoms in the corner as well. And these will comprise the unit cells that make up our overall crystal arrangement. Um, and so a lot of times thinking about like we just did that layer of six with three above and three below, it's a great way to visualize it, but it doesn't well represent the actual smallest unit. Just like in the Escher picture that we looked at where it was easy to see one of the repeating units, there was actually a smaller repeating unit that was the unit cell. And this is similar here as well. And so here are the actual unit cells for these three. All right, and we will stop this lecture there. <laughs>